Hello, dear Lana, welcome back to our lessons. This is yet another weekend, a weekend of mathematics. Due to public demand and especially due to the love for my school, my school is in Nakuru City, Landed Secondary School, and my class is the 2023 class. I have come up with a, a good uh, plan of making you very short videos for your revision, and today we have around eight of them. Now, today we'll start with a, a very important and very interesting chapter in Form 3, the last chapter in Form 3, and that is uh, equations of a circle. That is a substrand. The chapter is graphical methods. Now, look at the board. We have equations of circles. I will take you through some little knowledge. Just remind you that uh, circles are made up of two quadratic equations. So, a circle can either be made of a uh, semi circle which is in which is a curve and another semi circle which is another curve it can be of this nature it can be this way and this way in other words the first one here is a curve which is also a quadratic function quadratic function and this one is also a curve which is a quadratic function. So circles are made up of uh, two quadratic equations. And in this case, I will first of all give you the equation of a circle. The general formula for the equation of a circle. Equation, equation of a circle is written in the form x minus a square plus y minus b squared is equal to r squared. So when I said that a circle is made up of two quadratic equations, this is what I meant. This is the first quadratic, you can call it q1 or quadratic 1, and this is the second quadratic, call it q2. Then there's a relationship between the two uh, quadratic uh, equations with the radius of that Circle. This is the radius, radius uh, square. So we shall apply some concepts in uh, trying to understand how A, B, and R comes into play. Remember, A comma B is the center of that circle. And as I've said, R stands for the radius of that circle in units. So these are the crucial things I want you to understand. But again, I will draw to your attention because I'm giving an example. I will tell you that we apply the concept of completing the square method. Completing the square method. The square method. Method in solving for equation of a circle. When you solve for the equation of a circle, you're looking for two things. You're looking for the center. You're also looking for the radius, radius of that circle. So sit back, have somewhere to write, and ensure you concentrate in this lesson. I have an example here, and you can write this example with me. The equation of a circle The equation of a circle is given by x squared plus y squared minus 6x plus 4y minus 3 is equals to 0. Uh, determine, determine, determine the center and radius of this circle. Determine the center and radius of the circle. Solution. 
solution. We have already said that uh, 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 the equation of a circle is made up of two quadratic equations. And when you look at this equation here, there, is a, there are values that are related to x. So the first one is where we have x squared, we also have minus 6x. And the y values are also y squared plus 4y. So the x values will make one quadratic, the y values will make another quadratic. 3 and also 0, those ones are constant. So the first thing we do is we arrange this equation of this circle in such a way that we put the x's together and the y's together. So we shall have x squared uh, minus 6, 6x, that is the first quadratic, then plus y squared, y squared uh, plus 4y, then minus 3 is equal to 0. So this first step here will enable us to look for a value that is missing. In this first quadratic here, we have a value that is missing. And that value is, you know, a quadratic equation is written in the form ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to 0. That is a, so that's an equation. This is how a quadratic expression should look like. So in this one, we already have x squared, or the first part. We also have the next part, second part. But now the most important part is c. We should look for c and put it in the place of b for the first one and also for the second one. But again, remember, this constant should be moved to the other side of the equal sign. So we have x squared minus 6x plus y squared plus 4y is equals to, it goes to becoming a positive 3. Then back to our business, we start with the first quadratic expression. This first one here, remember we have the completing square method, especially when a, a quadratic is a perfect square. We say, if you're looking for c, b over 2 squared is equals to c. So that's what we apply. We are looking for c, then we do away with b and put uh, that c in the place of b. So in this first quadratic expression, our b is negative 6. So our c shall be negative 6 over 2, now applying the completing square method, square is going to give us c. We can do this one, but uh, make sure you don't expand. You don't uh, expand with power 2. By 2, 1, by 2, negative 3. So our c for the first part is negative 3. But again, remember, we are going to square it when we place it here. Let us do the other parts. The part now that has y. Our b is 4. So our c shall be 4 over 2. Then everything squared is equal to c. This one you cancel by 2, 1, by 2, 2. So you have 2 squared is going to be the second c. So what you do, you eliminate these b's on both sides and you substitute the c's in state. This is what I'm saying. In the first quadratic, x squared, now instead of 6x or negative 6x, we place the negative 3 squared that we found as c. Then we go to the next one, plus y squared. Instead of 4y or 4, we put the c that we got. Remember we got uh, 2 uh, squared. Very good. So, we do away with the b's and we introduce the c's that we had come up with is equals to 3. Now, this is what you do. This one is definitely going to be the square is common. Look at it. Even this one, the square is common. So, we shall have x minus 3. We factorize the square. We factor it out because it is common to both values. And it is a minus because this one is a minus and here there was a positive. Then plus, if you factor out the square, you shall have y plus 2 common square we put outside is equals to 3. This is what we are approaching. We are approaching x minus a square plus y minus b square to give us 
are coming. And that's what we are approaching at. Something funny about the other side of the equal sign. We are the C's simplified. So we add the first C, that is negative 3 squared. Then plus we add the second C, which is 2 squared. You shall have x minus 3 plus, okay, squared, y plus 2 squared is equal to 3. Negative 3 squared is 9. 2 squared is 4. If you total this, you get 16. This one gives you 16. Already, we have formed our quadratic, uh, sorry, our, our uh, equation of that circle. x minus 3 squared plus y plus 2 squared is equal to 16 is a number you can look for. The square root is, is a rational number. The square root of 16 is 4. And because you want this equation in this form, we shall put 4 squared instead of 16. 4 squared. That one makes the question very easy. You can be able to extract the center and the radius. Already, if A, B are the center, so you write center. The center, we write 3 without a negative. And negative 2. That is the center. This is what happens. If in your equation, the A and B values have negatives, when you are writing the center, you remove the signs. If they don't have negatives, you introduce, and that is what has happened. Negative 3, when it comes to the center, it becomes the coordinate 3 positive. And then positive 2, when it comes to center, it becomes negative 2. Finally, our radius, radius is 4. But you don't just write 4, you write 4 units. 4 units. Simple things to remember in this question, number 1. Ensure you arrange your equation of that circle in such a way that it will give you two quadratic expressions. Then you look for the value of C. By completing the square method, get the values of C and substitute them in the place of B. And make sure the constants are taken to the other side of the equal sign and you simplify them on the other side. Then write your equation in this form and extract the values for the center. And of course, the radius on the other side. I hope this one will help you. And from this lesson to the next lesson, I wish you all the best. See you later.